We continue our reading of God's Dream for You, The Chosen, a morning devotional by author Dwight K. Nelson. Today's reading, August 1. Happy birthday, Asha. The Davidic Code, Part 1. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Psalm 11997. May I place three pictures on the screen of your mind for a moment? Two won't be hard to imagine, but I wonder what picture the third one will be. Picture one, you see a classroom full of young Muslim boys kneeling on mats, their garments wrapped around their bended knees. It is a madras, a conservative Islamic school that indoctrinates their young. The boys are all reading the Quran, the holy book of their religion, their capped heads bobbing back and forth in rhythm to their rote memory and recitation. Picture two. A heartbroken, curly, bearded rabbi is surrounded by soldiers as he is forced out of his synagogue in a Jewish settlement in the Gaza Strip. Deported now from that occupied Palestinian territory, what is it the rabbi carries so tenderly in his arms? Look closely. They are the sacred scrolls of the holiest book of Judaism, the ancient Torah and prophets and writings. Congregants wail as the rabbi and their holy book are escorted away. Pictures of the three great mono, monotheistic religions of earth and what shall we play upon the screen of our minds for Christianity? How do Christians regard their holy book? I was stunned with a survey. I read that while most Americans regard themselves as Christians, barely half of them claimed to make moral choices based upon specific principles or standards, and of those, only three in ten named the Bible in, as the source of their principles. Would picture three be one of you and me carrying our Bibles under our arms to worship every Sabbath? I'd like to think so. But one Sabbath we stationed pathfinders at every entrance to our sanctuary to count how many worshipers arrived without their Bibles. Never mind the numbers, but suffice it to say that a group photo of you and me at worship wouldn't exactly be a portrait of our holy book front and center. So, can picture three be changed? I believe it can. Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible, can rightly be called an ode to God's Word. An acrostic poem, its 22 stanzas, begin with successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and every verse contains either law or word, or one of their synonyms. Psalm 119 is David's passionate love song for God's Word. A love song for our holy book? But why not? After all, Given life today, shouldn't the chosen be as passionate about their holy book as the other religions are? Just read Psalm 119. This concludes our reading today of God's dream for you, the chosen.